Hi there. Has your country suddenly been inundated with communist revolutionaries? Well, my friend, you're not alone. That happened here in Chile uh, just at the end of last year. So a bit of sense of, a de of deja vu there. Um, so, yeah, seeing how things have, have sort of devolved in the U.S., um, yeah, I, it, I thought you should really know what's happened down here because it's, it's very similar. Um, it's kind of the same commie bullshit that we're often dealing with. Um, and it's, it's a global phenomenon. So, um, yeah, let me go over kind of what's been happening, but also, um, I made a Facebook post about it that is probably the most popular post I've ever made. So I'm just going to read it real quick. Cause it, I think it gives a, an, a, a good breakdown of, of just how to view this, what kind of perspective we should really have on this. If you're thinking of doing a peaceful protest right now, or cheering on or helping the cops and military institute martial law, please just don't. Take care of yourself, your property, and your family, but the street battle is not your fight, and I'll tell you why. What's playing out in the U.S. is something we saw here in Chile only a few months ago, and it should be quite familiar to any student of history. It's the modern Hundred Years' War, the endless fight between communists and fascists. It plays out every time like clockwork, straight out of the communist playbook. Step one, pick whatever grievance or controversial issue that pisses the most people off, convince the masses that they are victims, and stoke the fires of hate until you have mobs in the streets. The first time around with Lenin, the issue was resentment of the rich and conditions of the poor during the growing pains of the Industrial Revolution. Once the 50s and 60s came around, the West was quite economically comfortable, uh, but so then the race and gender wars kicked off, providing two new populist victim classes for the left to manipulate. Once looting and burning begins, the powers that be will inevitably have to respond, and the commies and the fascists have their gang war in the streets. The state generally overreacts with martial law and domestic use of the military. Atrocities are, com are committed on both sides. The left uses them to continue driving angry mobs into the streets, etc. What must be remembered is that these, two, these are two totalitarian factions playing with the lives of the people for control of the state, and neither one of them gives a shit about you. The left does not care about black lives, the state enforcers don't care about you or your property, and neither side cares about justice. If you go out peacefully protesting right now, you are simply a useful idiot for the commies, running interference for their looters and rioters. You're a human shield for criminals. You might be on their side because of the issue of police accountability, but they are not on yours. They will rob, beat, or kill you while you shout, Black Lives Matter. If, su if you support martial law or try to help the police and military, you are naive to think they are there for your benefit. They will leave you to the mob long before protecting you or your property, applying indiscriminate violence as they attempt to control the situation. You may be on their side because of the issue of law, order, and security, but they are not in yours. They will beat, rest, and arrest, and shoot you just as fast as they would anyone else. The upside of living in America is you have both the right, uh, the right to carry firearms and use them in self-defense. That is the only reasonable action to take right now. In fact, with a little community organization, the communist Antifa have already been driven out of some smaller towns without any need for the state's help. So protect you and yours, and don't support either one of these street gangs. If you want to organize protests or reach out to government and law enforcement for whatever reason, wait until after all this is done. If you participate in this little war, you will be used as cannon fodder in a conflict that has nothing to do with the reason you are participating. So, yeah, I think that uh, a, a lot of what I said has come to pass and, and is pretty obvious. Um, and I, I I titled this, as from my own little note, I titled this little uh, rant Weimar uh, as in reference to the Weimar Republic. I mean, this is exactly what was going in, in going on in interwar Germany. You had uh, Antifa on one side, you had the brown shirts and the fascists on the other, and they have a, that they're just, fighting for control of the state and they're both just violent street gangs that you do not want to be associated with what's interesting about this global shit show is that you have the u.s and chile with with both the the riots and the uh pandemic bullshit happening but it's mirrored so toward the end of last year chile um had the riots and the looting and the burning for you know three to five months and then they went into the lockdown over the uh beer bug nonsense in the u.s obviously you you were locked down for like 
you know, three months or so, and then the looting and the burning of the, the commie rights kicked off. So, um, yeah, I, I figure with, with what you're experiencing in the U.S., I might as well tell you how it happened in Chile. Um, so, first of all, with, there's an initial cause. Let's, t let's talk about the initial cause of both of these. You had the George Floyd incident in the U.S., and that's what, you know, there was outrage over the video. Uh, outrage, outrage was certainly understandable, but um, that spark was clearly just an excuse for uh, a political faction to take violence into the streets. Same thing here. So basically, it was just a peaceful, uh, you know, nice uh, Friday afternoon in Santiago, as, as I'm told. And but then in the metro system, the students started protesting an increase in the uh, in the metro fare. Now, this increase was about four cents. And it was done by this sort of automated board of, of bureaucrats that just that adjust prices every year, like every year, I think even every quarter. Um, like they just adjust the cost of certain things based on the cost of living. So they adjusted the price of the Metro fare. This change was about four cents. It was about an increase of four cents. A few hours later, the city's in flames. 80 metro stations are burned out. Um, there was a high, a high rise. I think it was the headquarters of the main uh, power company down here. Uh, that went up in flames as well. So, yeah, four cent increase in the metro fare. Uh, capital city is, is in flames and chaos uh, by nightfall. So that's how it kicked off, and then it was much like you're seeing in the U.S. now. It, down here, it was just three, four, five constant months of just looting and burning everywhere, just absurd levels of, of destruction. Um, so, yeah, you have the initial spark, and then you go into state, the stated motivations. Like In the U.S., you have the race war. That's the angle that the left pushes uh, mainly. Uh, down here, it's more... Um, it's, there is the, the race angle a little bit, but it's not as big. They have the Mapuche who are the, uh, the indigenous Native Americans from, from down here. Um, I'd say it's a kind of a similar situation with Canada. So yeah, there, there is that angle, but it's not the main thing. The main thing in Latin America, especially in Chile, I think is, uh, uh, feminism. The feminism down here in Chile is the most militant and rabid feminism I have ever seen. In fact, a little while back, I don't know if you remember this anti-rape chant, this cringy anti-rape chant that everyone was, that a bunch of people did. Well, that was exported from here. It was actually some, you know, feminist dance theory professor or whatever that uh, came up with it, and you know, it became the the it became a global feminist phenomenon. So uh, that should give you an idea of of what does the feminism is like down here culturally and so basically the the riots and everything is is all put through the lens of feminism so all the slogans all the graffiti feminism is somehow worked into it so um like the, you, look, you look at the graffiti some of the common phrases like it's all about rapists right the, the government's a rapist the, all cops are rapists um uh free unlimited abortion is seems to be the most important thing ever to them that's that's spray painted everywhere uh just free unrestricted abortion um and then it, there's little slogans like the revolution will be female or it will not be um so yeah that that's the sort of uh that that's what they sort of use to keep the the fires of the revolution going is is mainly a feminism angle. Um, the other, all the other stuff is in there as well, but um, but it, that doesn't actually address the real motivation behind these. Like if, in the U.S., for example, the real motivation has nothing to do with uh, with race or racial equality. The real motivation is just power. Like they, is the real motivation is orange man is 
is the worst thing ever and we must remove him. Now everything they're doing is obviously counterproductive to that goal, but the real motivation is just seizing power, taking back control of the nation. Um, down here, it's similar, but well, we're in the middle of the current president's term, who is also a technically conservative. Um, but the real motivation was changing the Constitution. That became a big campaign. They wanted to have a constitutional convention and get the Constitution itself changed. Now, why would they want to change the Constitution? Well, I mean, they, they use the excuse that the current one was written uh, under Pinochet in the in 1980, I think, um, but and therefore it's unjust or whatever. But if you look at it, it's just another constitution for a republic or a democracy. Like it, it looks like just about everyone else's. It's there's nothing unique about the Chilean constitution. So obvi obviously, the reason a communist mob would want to change the the constitution is to enshrine free health care, free college, the gives me dads. Um, so, and that that's the other thing is students are, uh, I mean, students in the U.S. and the universities are, are obviously just fallen to the left through the long march through the institutions, but, I mean, they did that down here in Chile, too, and, yeah, the universities are really, like, um, also especially militant and, and rabid when it comes to uh, socialism and just full-on communism. Um, yeah, it, it's almost a meme down here. Like, everyone's working on it, their thesis. Like, everyone's in college. They, they were all brainwashed. Like, in the U.S., they were... In the U.S., you're just brainwashed to, to go to college. You have to get to go through the indoctrination center and get your certificate, your degree. Uh, but down here, they fell for the same uh, line of bullshit that they need to go to college. So everyone's trying to go to college. Um, but I mean, they don't have the, the wealth to burn that, that the U S does. So, um, yeah, it's this weird thing where the, everyone's in college and, and they take 10 or f like 10 years to get their four year degree. Um, everyone's working on their thesis until, like I said, that's a meme. Everyone's working on their thesis till they're like, 35 and finally move out and get their degree or whatever um but and the reason it takes so long is they i mean there hasn't they haven't always been directly looting and burning like this like this these riots are haven't happened for like decades but um the students would, would still do protests where they just wouldn't wouldn't go to class so um you know there's whole semesters and years where they're just not going to class so obviously they're not going to get their degree um so anyway the, the universities and the, the college students drive a lot of this and of course that's also that but that's sort of led by the matriarchy of feminism um and yeah that's kind of what kicked off it was a student protest uh over this little metro fair that you know was the little spark and then they pushed the the feminism angle and and that's behind the real motivation of trying to change the constitution. Um, it looks like that didn't happen, thankfully. Um, uh, and I don't think that's going to, uh, come about because really in, in Chile, it's they're they're split right down the middle, very much like the U S actually the politics in the U S and Chile are, are remarkably similar. It's very much a, a two party system. Um, and the right is just spending its time reacting to the left, but it, it's, it's split right down the middle, and, and it's very, very polarized with these two sides. So there is this conservative block that is very much half of the population, and uh, there's probably going to be a reaction to this. You know, I mean, there's a there's definitely pushback. Um, so, yeah, I wouldn't count on the Chilean constitution being changed anytime soon. Um so yeah, you got the initial causes, you got the stated motivations that goes into the real motivations. Um, but yeah, I guess the, the only other thing I really wanted to say about the Chilean incident with their particular brand of uh, uh, commie riots 
is I, I'm kind of astounded by the baby gloves that are used on the communists down here. The, with the, the, all these university kids and even the high school kids, like just these children tearing everything apart and burning everything to the ground. It's become kind of almost cringy how, I mean, I know in the U S you've got similar complaints, right? You've got these, um, all these kids getting arrested for rioting and then Hollywood bails them out. Um, the court system seems to be on their side. The, the, all of the leftist mayors obviously are sort of behind what's going on. Uh, very similar in Chile. You know, you got the politicians in the court system kind of all on their side, but there, there's a real difference because of who the president is and, and how things kind of went down in the, in the beginning. So the president here, Pinera is he's the only conservative president they've had since Pinochet. Like literally since Pinochet, it's all been leftist and full on like openly socialist presidents. And then, uh, but then you have this, uh, this Pinera guy, he's in his second term, only conservative president they've had, but he's like, I, I would describe him as the Mitt Romney of Chile. So he's this just weak ass milk toast, barely technically center right, uh, sort of religious conservative that um, comes from money, like incredibly wealthy individual uh, connected to the you know, sort of crony uh, upper class of, of Chile. Um, but he's not Trump. You know, he's, he's no Trump. He has no balls, no fortitude, nothing. He's so what happened is all this stuff kicked off. And at first he was like, we're at war and, you know, we won't tolerate blah, blah, blah. But then, um, you know, videos came out of like, uh, you know, some of the videos of, of, of the cops going overboard and, uh, you know, some police abuses came out and, then there were a lot of people that got their eyes shot out or injured from the the less lethal munitions. Um, and he just immediately, like, capitulated. Like, he, he talked tough at first a little bit, but, like, within days he just completely capitulated and completely neutered the cops. So it's like all of a sudden the cops were not allowed to, like, use anything. And from then on, it just became this incredibly bizarre situation where, I mean, the videos are, are incredible. They're, these communist mobs are literally stoning the police. I mean, it's just, I mean, I, I know there's violence and things thrown at, 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 like, protests anywhere, but no country would tolerate the communists and the mobs in the way that Chile has been tolerating them during the the recent riots um i mean they're just showering bricks and stones on the police it's like i mean it's like artillery it's just it'll just be raining pavement on the cops and they're just they're just sitting there in tortuga formation with their shields getting hit with rocks like they're just not doing anything and they're not and obviously the all the leftist politicians and judges and court system and everything uh, essentially encourages the communist revolution. Um, so, and then the cops are neutered. So yeah, there's just, there's like no response. I mean, I know in the U S there's and other places that there's been some outrage over like, um, you know, kid gloves being used on rioters, but it's been nothing to the, compared to the recent, uh, riots down here and the the absolute lack of action and neutering of the police that happened with uh, with that. Well, I mean, hell, the 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 police raided the headquarters of the Communist Party in Chile and found it packed full of incendiary devices and like ingredients for making you know IDs and, and Molotov cocktails and shit no one was ever arrested you know they didn't shut down the communist party they didn't arrest anyone involved like it just 
eh, whatever, like you have clear evidence that this political party is organizing an insurrection and, and the violence and the looting and the burning. Nothing. So what's interesting is once the, the pandemic stuff came about, once the, the coronavirus bullshit narrative came down the pipe and the state started implementing uh, the sort of lockdown measures and things like that, it actually stopped the riots. So, yeah, down here, it's like there was looting, burning, but then, bam, it's like it just completely stopped. So um, it'll be interesting to see what happens once summer comes around, if they try to uh, sort of uh, bring it up again. I don't know. It, it's weird timing because we're in the middle of, of the current term of the current president. So, um, yeah, it's not like they have an election like we do. And I don't know if they're going to try to, you know, intimidate the population into accepting a, a constitution change or whatever. But, um, yeah, we'll see if it picks up again. But I found it interesting that the the corona actually stopped the riots down here. While the riots stopped corona in uh, in in North America, right? So, um, yeah, that's it. It was, we've all been going through the same shit. It was just mirrored or flipped, kind of like our hemispheres. So, anyway, that's it for now. Just thought you'd be interested in that, and I will talk to you guys later.